Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. Today's video is going to be about rooftop tents. We're going to be talking about the pros. We're going to be talking about the cons. If you are a rooftop tent hater, stick around for the con section. I'll put a link down here when that starts. If you are a rooftop tent lover, stick around for the pros section, which will be coming up first. Maybe I'll link to it down here as well. Uh, and if you are just considering a rooftop tent or just wanted to know a little bit more, then watch, watch both because I'm going to give an unbiased opinion on rooftop tents. I've spent decade years backpacking uh, and ground tents. I uh, have a lot of experience with that. Last couple years, I've been doing primarily rooftop tents because I'm really getting into kind of vehicular camping or overlanding as a lot of people say. Sorry, I got like hummingbirds and stuff going crazy, so hopefully it's not too loud. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so real quick, let's talk about how rooftop tents work. Uh, there's a few different kinds. There's kind of hard shell clamshells that just kind of pop up, either fold up or all the way up with pistons and the footprint, the sleeping area of the tent is basically the size of the tent itself. Uh, there are these kind, which are pretty popular which actually fold out. So the actual sleeping area of the tent is about double the size of the footprint of the tent when it's folded up. There are some out there that kind of combine both mechanisms, which are pretty cool. Uh, but those are those are your two main, two main setups there. These kind are gonna be typically a little bit cheaper than the hard shell kind, uh, and they are gonna be a little more difficult to put up. They'll take maybe five minutes instead of one minute, but they do allow you to have a smaller overall footprint. So if you have a smaller vehicle or if you're putting it on like the back of the bed, like I do, then these kind of fold up ones are pretty much your only bet. If you have an SUV or something with the full roof area, then you can use those kind. So these, this isn't like a list that I compiled by researching the internet. This is just my own real world use from using the tents. So the original thing that led me to purchasing a rooftop tent was the main benefit of being up off the ground. Now that in and of itself has a lot of pros and it also has some cons. So we'll touch on the pros. So for me out in Colorado, half the year or more sometimes in some of these places there's snow on the ground or there's freshly melted snow on the ground so there's mud on the ground and Colorado and a lot of other places are really rocky as well so finding a nice spot to lay a tent that isn't dirty that doesn't require a lot of work that doesn't require clearing rocks is sometimes a pain in the butt as well as finding level places to camp this solves all of those problems so you're up off the ground so you're off the snow you're off the mud you're off the rocks levelness of the tent does matter still but that can be solved by making your truck level that can be solved by driving up on rocks or leveling blocks like i like to use or logs or any number of things you can level your truck even if the ground that you're on is not level so pretty much unless the terrain is really extreme you're going to be able to get a level tent you can't really do that with a ground tent also, if you are up off the ground versus being on the ground, uh, cleanup is a lot easier, especially if it rains overnight and water is washing and turning into mud under you or flowing into your tent if you don't have that quite laid out right. None of that with a rooftop tent. Uh, you don't have to worry about stuff and debris on your tent and packing it up and brushing it off later. All you have is water on your tent really for the most part unless some leaves fall on it. So then you just pack it up, there's no mud. Uh, you will want to unfold it and let it air out when you get back home probably. Uh, but as far as the packing up is concerned, it's very clean, I guess you could say. So another huge benefit of being up off the ground is that you are away from snakes, spiders, scorpions, other bugs and insects and critters and that kind of stuff, as well as offers a little bit more protection from your bigger critters, like bears and stuff like that, if you have to worry about that. Yes, a bear could get up here, but for in my mind, I feel like it's a little bit more safe from those types of animals as well. Setup is pretty easy. These are the hardest to set up rooftop tents. So they take, I don't know, maybe five minutes, a little less if you really, if you really hurry. And the hard shell ones are even quicker. Some of them take like 15 seconds, some of them take like a minute. So rooftop tents for the most part are relatively easy to set up. Obviously nowadays there's really easy ground tents to set up as well, like those pop-up ones, you just kind of throw them up in the air and they're set up. So setup as you could or might not have seen is relatively easy. I was a little distracted, my dog was kind of running around trying to get something. So it took me a little, a little longer because I forgot to unclip the things. Uh, but setup's pretty easy. These rooftop tents are actually the most difficult to set up of all of them. The uh, hard shell clamshell ones are even easier. Yeah, sorry, he's trying to catch a squirrel or something. Uh, so the hard shell ones take like 10 
to 60 seconds to set up a lot of times. These ones, a few minutes. So setup is relatively easy. Ground tents depends on the tent. Some you just throw up into the air and it sets up. Others can take several minutes. So I would say setup is a pro in general because you don't have to find a spot or clear out anything, kind of like I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, overall setup, I would say is a pro for rooftop tents. For the most part, rooftop tents are pretty heavy duty as well. They're gonna have good rain flies. Some of them have pretty good insulation. They're gonna hold up to the wind and rain mostly better than kind of your average uh, ground tent. But again, you can get some really heavy duty ground tents that'll that'll do just fine as well. Another huge plus to rooftop tents is they have a built-in mattress, pretty much all of them. And the mattress is pretty good. So it's gonna be much more comfortable experience than sleeping on your kind of traditional camping pads. Granted, you could bring a whole mattress with you if you want uh, and put that in a regular tent, but this has already got it built in. So it's always there. You can put bedding on it. And in addition to the mattress always being in the tent, you can, for most tents, keep your bedding in the tent as well. So I keep like a jumbo sleeping bag in there all the time, fold it up, it's in there, unfold it, it's ready to go. Just throw my pillow in and I'm good to go. So always have a mattress pretty much always have a bedding depending on the tent, but pretty much most of them you can put the bedding in there. Some of them you can throw your pillows and stuff in there as well. Another advantage is this is specifically obviously related to vehicular camping, but it takes up less overall space. So you gotta park your truck or your car somewhere anyway, so it's gonna take up that much space. And normally with a ground tent, you would have to go and find another spot and then you're taking up more space. With a rooftop tent, obviously some of them take up even less than this, but this takes up about the space coming out and brings a ladder down. With these ones also, depending on how high your rooftop tent is, this is kind of a pseudo awning. Obviously when paired with a separate awning, you could have a bunch of cover from the sun or the rain. And a lot of these rooftop tents also have completely separate awning type structures that you can build into them. So take up less space in general and the space they do take up, you can also convert to more usable, either shaded or entire enclosed space as well. The other thing I like, and this is kind of hard to put into a pro necessarily, but for me specifically, having my tent on my truck kind of establishes the truck as a base camp. I use the tailgate as a table to cook on, hang stuff on, have my water, maybe put some towels on the side, set up lights on my truck, and everything is there just right around my truck. So I have my tent for sleeping or hanging out or whatever and everything else is right there in the vicinity. You can do this with a ground tent as well. Obviously if you put it right next to your truck, same deal. Or if you put it further away, maybe some people like that separation and you could set up a table or whatever like that. But for me it's kind of easy to set up my truck with the tent on it as kind of just a central base camp or everything is all in one place. And then the last of the pros, this one's kind of, I kind of save these like pros that are kind of pros for the end, is it takes up less space as far as packing is concerned. So it's up on your roof rack. So yeah, you could put boxes or other stuff on your roof rack, but typically if you have a truck, you want to just put stuff in the bed of the truck. If you have an SUV, you just want to put stuff in the back of the SUV. Uh, a tent, a big old tent like this is just up there where you wouldn't normally typically put a lot of other stuff. Obviously you could put cargo, you could put boxes, you could put Pelican cases, whatever up on your roof rack. But in my mind and probably in a lot of people's mind, the rooftop tent is up there just kind of taking up relatively wasted space. It's designed to go on the roof already. It's typically, some of them are very streamlined and they're all like relatively streamlined, especially if you kind of have them in the back of the truck like this. So it's, yeah kind of takes up less space, but uh, we'll just kind of say that's kind of a pro, which is gonna kind of get us into the cons. So with the rooftop tent, it's not all fun and games and gumdrop smiles. There are some bads to it, some cons, and that's what we're gonna get into. So if you are a rooftop tent hater, well, here's some more fuel for the fire. First point is they are expensive. Granted, there are some ground tents that get really, really expensive as well, but for the most part, for a decent ground tent, you're paying a couple hundred bucks. For a rooftop tent, you're paying upwards of a thousand. Some of these suckers are like 5,000 or more dollars. This one that I have is a CVT Mount Shasta, and I believe it was around 16 to 1800. So that's well over a thousand dollars. So there's no denying that you're gonna be able to camp much cheaper in a ground tent than you are in a rooftop tent. But you do have to remember 
that it does include a mattress as well. So it's like a little bit of offset, but I'm, I'm not, there's no getting around it. They're pretty expensive. <sighs> Another thing is they're pretty heavy. Uh, even the lightest rooftop tents are almost 100 pounds. I think they're like um, about somewhere between 80 and 90 pounds for like the lightest rooftop tents that are out right now that I'm aware of. And they go upwards of 100, 200, some of them up to like 300 pounds, I think. Uh, so these things aren't lightweight. So what that means is you're gonna need a specialized rack system. Uh, your vehicle may come equipped with racks that can handle that kind of weight, but you gotta remember that if say this rooftop tent is 150 pounds, that's more than a bicycle, that's more than a kayak. You're gonna make sure your vehicle's roof racks, bars and all that stuff is rated for that much weight dynamic. I look excessively short down here because I'll show you in a second, but my truck is up on these tall blocks to get it level. Anyway, yeah, most manufacturers of racks do put that dynamic rating into the rating. So if a rack system typically says it can hold X amount of pounds, that is the dynamic load. And you may be wondering, well, my rack system says it can hold 200 pounds. The rooftop tent is 150 pounds. I could only put a 50 pound person in there and I would already be at the weight limit. It's not really true because dynamic weight limit means the, the limit in motion. The static limit is often two to many times higher than the dynamic weight load. So some man rack manufacturers will tell you the dynamic as well as the static. So you can depend on if your rack system can hold 200 pounds, it'll be able to hold like 600 pounds probably of static weight. Don't quote me on that, but that's generally how it works. Quick note on rack systems. I had this rack that was weighted for 300 pounds dynamic per bar. So this whole system with two bars theoretically should hold 600 pounds, which is overkill for 150 pound tent. My racks broke. So that brings us to one more point. Even if your rack system can handle the weight, it may not be able to handle the weight off-road. Going off-road will introduce new stressors to your rack system as you shift side to side and go up and down and do all this stuff, which may cause your rack system to fail like mine did. I will be uploading a video about my rack system failing and what I did to fix it. So if you have the same rack system and you're worried about it, I did something to fix it that I think should hold up well that's relatively easy. So I'm gonna put that on my B channel and I'll link to my B channel somewhere, or comment down below and I'll pin it or something. So if you wanna know that, I'm gonna upload it to my B channel because it's not really a mass, mass appeal. There's a few of you that have that rack system and I'm making a video for you, so stay tuned for that. All right, so we're, we're expensive, we're big, we're heavy, we need specialized equipment to carry it, and we also need a place to store it. So you can store it on your vehicle all the time and then just take the hit on fuel economy and the extra little bit of wear and tear on your suspension and stuff like that, and a lot of people do that. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. You look cool at the mall and stuff as well. I don't. I have a pulley system that I can make a separate video on as well where I it's very simple for me by myself to raise and lower this off of my truck. If you don't have a pulley system, then before I had the pulley system, I could load this onto my truck by myself. I kind of had to grr and grunt and lift it up. I have videos of it somewhere back in my history. Uh, much easier with two people, but for any other tent, you know, a hundred pound girl or boy could load that thing into the, into the car, or the SUV or the truck, no problem. But with this, it does require more effort. In addition to actually getting it on there, it does require a little bit of effort to mount, typically some nuts and some bolts. There are some quick detach systems out there by like Front Runner, I think, but it's kind of specialized and you gotta use the rack system and stuff. So for the most part, people are getting a wrench and actually bolting this thing to their roof racks. So that'll take a few minutes as well. Uh, I have dialed in a system where I can get it off and on in just a couple minutes, so it's pretty quick, but still not gonna be as quick as just grabbing a bag and throwing it into the back of your truck. Another con is if you just want a really massive tent where you can basically throw a party in there, there's no rooftop tents that are that big. Uh, they get relatively big, you know, you could sleep four, usually like two adults and two kids, I think are kind of the biggest tents they have out there. Some maybe just a tiny bit bigger than that, but there, I don't think there's any rooftop tents that you can stand up in all the way and there's not, there's just, there's just not as much room in rooftop tents. Granted, for me, I have a history of using like really small, ultra light, ultra small backpacking tents. So they do feel roomy, but for a ground tent, you can get 
massive, massive tents. So con is they don't get that big. So if you really want a huge tent where you can stand up and do all kinds of stuff in, rooftop tents aren't gonna be for you. Another con is that you have to camp where you can park. So sometimes when I'm out on the trail, there's a little pool off that you could park a truck and yeah, I could camp there, but then down 50 feet out where I can't get my truck to or I shouldn't get my truck to is like a nicer camping spot with better views or just it's in a it's in a better area altogether and I can't get my truck there. So therefore either I have to pop up my rooftop tent, come up and sleep in it, but hang out down there, which is what I typically do, or you need a tent that you can go and put down there. So if you really wanna camp, camp as in put your tent at a very specific location that's you know the perfect spot in between these trees that you can't get your truck to, well, you can't get your truck to it. That means you can't put your tent there if all you have is a rooftop tent. And that kind of ties into, this doesn't affect me as much because I'm not really extreme, like living out in the outback or anything like that. But if you do only have a rooftop tent and your vehicle gets stuck or crooked or something and you gotta spend the night outside, you can't sleep in a rooftop tent if your vehicle's all kinds of crazy. Uh, so it is good to kind of have a backup ground tent with you if you're kind of going anywhere that you may potentially, which kind of could be anywhere, you may potentially get stuck in some crazy, crazy way or flip your truck or something and have to spend the night out there. Then having a ground tent or a backup ground tent will come in really handy. And that'll bring us to the last con I feel like talking about right now and that I can kind of think of off the top of my head, which is to get into all rooftop tents, pretty much you need a ladder. So not a good option, obviously, if you have some sort of disability that you can't climb up a ladder to get into the tent, uh, which affects a lot of people out there. Or maybe if you're a little older and that doesn't really sound like something you wanna do, or if you have really young kids and it doesn't sound like what you really wanna do with them. For me, I don't have either of those, but I do have a dog, which he's a big dog, he's a 90 pound dog, and he sleeps with me in the tent, uh, just because, you know, that's, that's how I wanna do it. Getting him up there, up the ladder into the tent, it's a little bit of a chore. I just kinda gotta pick him up and kinda throw him up in there, so it's not super easy. If you have a small dog, obviously a little easier, but overall getting up into the tent may be impossible for some and may bring some difficulties for others. Okay, thanks for sticking around. Again, I'll link to stuff if I mentioned it down below that you might be interested in. And yes, for that rack breakage video, subscribe to my B channel. Uh, I don't know if I can link it up here, but I haven't made the video yet, but I'll be making it soon. So if you're interested, in that and the fix that I did, uh, subscribe to my B channel or here, I'll mention it probably whenever I upload it. As well, if you found this video helpful, informative or any of those things, take two seconds, hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. Get subscribed to the channel if you're not and feel free to ask any questions down below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. All right, take care.